We changed our idea, like our design idea, a lot. We'd like put it like, well, I don't really like the way that looks. I don't like how that window looks. So we'd knock that out, put in some glass. But the cool thing about the cob is that you can completely like add to it and then sculpt it back. You could keep playing around with the idea of what, um, you know, what we wanted to do with it. My name's Chris. And my name's Jack. And we built this cob structure over here behind us on our property. This video is sponsored by Ava Polar. Get 15% off your very own portable personal air cooler using the link below and using code FLORB at checkout. They had just passed that you could build a structure without any permits uh, on your property under 200 square feet. So that's what we did. Both Jack and I are artists. I'm interested in sculpting and the idea of being able to sculpt a structure was really fascinating to me. It only has really four ingredients. It's uh, chopped straw, sand, the soil here has got a lot of clay in it, and then water. And so this is just mixed in like a mortar mixer, and then you just kind of start building it like a sandcastle. We just kind of put out some feelers. Uh, my friend contacted me with a person that knew about building the structure. And so it was a process of co-design. Uh, Chris had ideas, I had ideas, the builders, had their input and eventually we arrived at a floor plan. A lot of these structures are found in like Cornwall, England. The fact that they can hold up in a wet climate was really fascinating to me and the idea is that you just need to, to build an eave that's far enough away so that direct water won't hit on it. The humidity has to be down enough that it wicks out the moisture. So it took us a while. Once the rain started, forget it. You just had to put a tarp over it and then wait until the spring or as soon as it started to dry out. I did a lot of the carpentry on this, put the roof on, and I'm amazed that it worked because it's got so many facets. You would think that it would be raining inside, but for whatever reason, it seems to have held. So this is our cob house. The design we decided to make into like a kidney bean shape. We built a trench down about, I don't know, I want to say like a, what, about a foot and a half and then filled it with rocks and we built a kind of a chicken wire cage around that and then built it up off of the ground another like a foot and a half. Built the cob on top of that after we've had all this stone work in there and kind of created a cement base for that. And the idea is that you have to keep it so that the cob doesn't wick moisture. Otherwise, that's another thing that will help deteriorate it. The walls have no structure other than just the cob themselves, and the walls are about that thick. But the pillars actually have like a four by four in the center of it. We formed up a column with like a form. Once it was made, then we'd put it up, we'd pack it in, and so we created this form. And then I wrapped a rope around, and then this has just all been sculpted for that shape. Part of the space was gonna be a sauna, and the other space was going to just be like a massage studio. But once we were in here, the space felt really not very good, didn't have a very good feel about it. So we pushed the wall down and decided to make it into one big space. We decided to put a window in here. There wasn't a window originally, and we carved that back. That's what's so nice about the material. Like, we'd have something, and we'd be like, well, I don't really like that very much, so we'd carve it, or we'd add stuff back. We have over 30 bottles that were gonna be like stained glass throughout the whole thing. At a certain point, it looked too busy. All those things are covered over. But these are some of the ones we did keep. So these act as kind of like a stained glass. These were the windows that we had a guy make for us. This is all reclaimed glass. And it's really nice because you just don't need to have any kind of wood frame or anything. Once it's made, you just put it into the cob, and you sculpt around it, and it's set. So if you ever need to replace it, you just carve it out, get it wet, carve it out, and you could put something else in if you wanted. This is just with plexiglass, and then we put rice paper on it, glued on it. So the ceiling was put on after. So once the whole structure was built, we had this spoke of the roof and we had, I don't know how many people, we had maybe like eight people that essentially just kind of lifted it up on top of the cob and set it in place. And then once it was set, then we started in with filling it in, putting more cob in so everything was in place. And we ended up using the bamboo just as more of a visual. We thought it would be fun to look as if it had beams, but in fact, the bamboo is cut in half, made 
need more to kind of help cover up the seams of the reed fencing. So we had spent some time in Bali and in Thailand, and it really reminded us of a lot of the places that we went to that had this reed kind of ceiling. And then we put a skylight in. This top part was another thought that we have to just to create another way to get more light coming in like a skylight. We added this little cupola top once we put the basic frame on, then we added that to the top of it. We had another skylight here, but we took it out when we decided to put in a wood stove. We have radiant heat floor, so we have a thermostat here. It keeps a nice medium heat, but when it was a massage studio, we put the wood stove in so it could get really hot in here. So it was really comfortable for that. This is our Dutch door. <laughs> this was a reclaimed door that we had that we cut in half. We had an end of a table that we had kind of altered, and so we stuck that on as an extra ledge. I mean, even though we have three doors, <laughs> we have three doors in here. It's fun to have this. When you're building the cob, it's pretty rough. So there was a lot of like, once it's up, there's carving back, you carve it, carve it back. So there's a lot of carving. And then there's a final coat, which would be like a, kind of like a stucco. So it's still the same material, but it's super fine, kind of like how the, the floor is. And then that's troweled on, like you would have somebody that would be doing a stucco coat. And then that comes back and you can come back and sand it back or wet it and smooth it. The final coat was like, maybe th I think three coats of that to get the smooth effect on both sides. Sometimes it can get, uh, it's a little fragile on some parts. I'm just sort of reconsidering like on the sills, maybe putting wood or something so it makes it a little sturdier against being hit. But even if it is, you just come back in, you wet the cob, it's like, like clay and repair it and smooth it and it's, um, it's good to go. I believe it's four feet. I think that's what was suggested, four to five feet as an overhang. And so far, it's really held up. Um, and we've had, of course, crazy storms and even, you know, on a horizontal rain or whatever, but it keeps enough of the moisture off of the structure. At some point, we were thinking we were gonna have gutters, but we decided against that. When it rains, it just goes around in this circle here. I believe it's about right in here, we, we put a time capsule in. It was really sweet. It was like the, the people that helped us build added things in, notes. Um, our kids added things that were important to them at the time and pictures, we have pictures of us. It's all inside here, along with 30 plus bottles that you no longer can see. <laughs> While this was being built, I knew of at least three other cobs. And then all the builders would come and they'd come like check it out. And then, you know, so there was like this community of cob builders. I don't know if it's because it's so labor intensive that the cob is used maybe in portions of other structures, maybe not entire structure. Mostly just people are just very curious about it and just really wonder like, why did you do that? <laughs> what was the inspiration, you know? I mean, I feel like I had this sort of crazy idea to do that. and. And then we did it, and it's hard. Like, there were times where I just was like, I'm so sick of this, I just want to like throw a stick of dynamite out there because it's just taking so long, or it's not beautiful yet, it's, there's a lot of more work, we have to wait through the winter, but I'm so glad we did it because it's so satisfying now. And it's become this place, like, when people discover it, they're really enchanted by it, you know? And that's, that to me is really satisfying. If you have like a really fun, strong inspiration to do something, it's, I think it's completely worthwhile to, to follow through with that. You're gonna attract other people that will appreciate it and will enjoy it. That's, that's, my, that's my feeling about it. It's summertime and it's hot out, and whether you're in a van, you're living off the grid, you're traveling, or you're just wanting to cut down on your electricity bill, Avapolar is the product that you need. Avapolar is a personal air cooler that can drop the temperature around you by 4 to 17 degrees Celsius using only about 10 watts of electricity. Avapolar keeps you cool in the most natural way by using their patented innovative Ava Breeze evaporative material which both humidifies and cools the air around you. Avapolar is incredibly portable and it saves a lot of space because I mean just look how small this thing is. You just fill the Avapolar with water and then plug it into a U USB port and you're good to go. You can even run it off of a power bank. You can take it with you to work or wherever you want to go. You can run it at night by your bed since it is extremely quiet and then you can stay cool using a tiny amount of energy. Ava Polar is offering my viewers 15% off whenever you use code FLORP at checkout so click the link in the description and go to avapolar.com and order your very own personal air cooler today. Have a great week.